Another month has begun and round much of the galaxy the sound can be heard of husbands complaining that they swear they put those twinkly lights away properly last year. Someone must have gone through into the box and tangled them and why do bulbs fail so often, especially when they're LEDs? Trees from the northern part of the Earth-like world's treadle tremble, waiting for the sound of an axe. The smell of overboiled sprouts fills the air and power generators start an increasingly loud whine as demands for electricity to supply light displays between warring neighbours starts to ramp up. Here at Hutton, we're a little more restrained in our preparation for In Search Your Favourite Celebration that comes near the end of December here. We've had to put away the mistletoe as it's really difficult to take advantage of it if you're wearing a remlock. Holly is uncomfortable if it gets inside your flight suit. And the less said about Dev Meat's offer to lend us his dangly baubles, the better. We do, of course, have our own jolly bearded man who goes around wearing what we've told him is a red suit. But we think that he really hasn't got the hang of the ho, ho, ho. Just listen to this. Our mics are live. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rudolf Hucker, and look, I'm here for two weeks in a row. Call the Dark Stout Book of Galactic Records. I'm Harry Balzac, and I've got my own entry in the Galactic Dark Book of Stout Records. I'm Wilma Fingerdy, and believe me, I've got an entry in the Galactic Book of Dark Records. But um, you'll sleep better at night if I don't tell you what it's for. I'm Mia Harkness, and at this time of year, I've got a dark entry. I, I mean, you can't see very far into my passage. I'm Hoenker, and I've got a record for my dark facial appendage. I'm Norma Snockers, and I've got lots of records, but Lou doesn't like me playing them too loudly. After that record, record, recording, I suppose we really should get on with <coughs> um, some news. Little Limpets team up to form the Fab Five. Team Meme Scheme Stream Gleam. New racing championship shape takes shape. A hippo shape. We catch up on the conversation. Order has been restored to the galaxy. It's the community. All the best ones are here. First, this evening, our intrepid news team over at Hutton have been contacted by a representative of the League of Underrepresented Limpets, which, unsurprisingly, is the first time we've ever heard of them. Limpets throughout the galaxy have been up in arms over their treatment, forced to labour for long hours going whittle, 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 all the way to the nearest chunk of something, pick it up and bring it back, or condemned to being stranded in just one of billions upon billions of rocks out there around gas giants, some of them even have to scrape all the green goo off your ship after a pilot to Thargoid interaction, and that's just nasty. All they read on the Galactic Forums is message after message about how limpets are useless and constantly expire, or how their pathfinding needs help after they go boink into asteroids. Nothing but negativity. But without these tireless little minions, so much of the galaxy would grind to a halt. The mining, the data from strange things found out there in the galaxy, the war against the Thargoids, over full megaships that, if they aren't milked with their juicy contents, would simply burst at the seams. The galaxy, quite literally, runs on limpets. However, the League have been working tirelessly with Manticore, affectionately called Mother by all limpets, and they've had an upgrade. Or at least their launching mechanism has. Rather than having one purpose in life, your limpets can now, by interfacing with new controllers, have a variety of jobs. As with all of the greatest get-togethers, there are five. Think the Beatles, the Power Rangers, 
the famous five, and even the five horsemen of the apocalypse. Yes, there are five we checked. Death, war, pestilence, famine, and taxes. First, there is the blue limpet, an upgraded controller that lets limpets behave as a prospector or a collector. First finding all those juicy void opals, then scooping them up. Then there's the green limpet, coloured that way so it doesn't stand out against the Thargoid ghoul over your ship, equipped with a squeegee and a bucket, cute little arms that do repairs, and its very own teensy tiny little probinator for sticking into immobilised Thargoids, Tharglets and Thuckers. Probably as revenge for their shutdown beams or something. Next up, it's the Red Limpet, the League's very own superhero rescue limpet, equipped with a cape and underpants on the outside, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound and faster than a speeding plasma shot. This little fella comes with a jerry can of fuel, a crowbar, and of course those cute little repair arms. Perfect for chopping open your ship when you've had a percussive interface with the planet's surface and are stuck in your seat uh, before rescuing you. Or just handy if someone's got a thumb out the window asking for a quick top-up on the old hydrogen fuel. Note, limpets aren't equipped for fleet carriers. Tritium fumes make them feel a little bit sick. Next, the camo limpet. The operative. With black face paint, usually wearing a ghillie and a bad attitude, this little guy is perfect at getting into places he shouldn't be. He can scoop, he can scout, and with a selection of lockpicks, crowbars and a cutting torch, is an expert at hacking his way into even the most secure of cargo hatch. And finally, the most colourful of our new little friends... The Rainbow Limpet. A true Swiss Army Limpet. It's got a built-in USB stick, a set of screwdrivers, a few blades, one of those things for taking stones out of horses' hooves, and of course all the usual limpety equipment. The Galaxy is looking forward to welcoming their new little friends and their Limpet Tamer, complete with chair and hollow whip. Uh, don't worry, it's very soft and they say they quite like it. Aboard your ships in the very near future. Of course, it's mandatory, as with Super Ted or Banana Man, to say the secret magic word to transform a common or garden limpet into a super limpet. But when you do, that's when the magic happens. Available next week for more good stock. It's available. Controller size is limited. Limpets may not perform as well as a non-super variety. Manticore cannot be held responsible for any limpet-related collateral damage, including but not limited to personal injury, ship damage, accidental misuse of the probinator, and legal consequences of using the lockpicks. For full terms and conditions, you can write to Manticore at one lovely, li lovely little limpet way, Volta Orbital, Sigreth. They say the devil makes work for idle joysticks, and many commanders have taken to drawing pictures on a galactic canvas. As seen in a recent live stream from the Pilots Federation, commanders have been traversing the galaxy and using the Edastro tracker to leave trails across the galaxy like a load of stellar slugs and have used this to create images. Not high art, oh no, not for them. The recreation of the Mona Lisa on an almost unimaginable scale, not for them. The realism of Vermeer, nor the broad brush strokes of Liechtenstein, nor even the join the dots puzzle for the gods. No, they've created a meme. Like a game of visual scrabble, they've taken an existing picture, in this case the head of a cat previously drawn by members of the Fleet Carrier Owners Club, and added a head and pointy finger of a woman in an attempt to recreate the famous cat meme that was popular in the 21st century. I say this is not high art. Objectively, it isn't exactly a Banksy. But it is witty, a step up from the crew member from Among Us, and head and shoulders above the drawing of the male genitalia, which was definitely unsolicited. We don't think that this will be the last of such images to be created by pilots with spare time and a taste for art on a grand scale. We do, however, have a warning for those of you who might think that tagging a nebula is a worthwhile endeavour. Dav has control of the galaxy. He could decide at any time to turn it upside down give it a shake, and erase all of the lines from the map. After all, now that Dr. K has moved on, who's going to stop him? There has been a rash of rush building across many planets in the last few months as entrepreneurial entertainment moguls have been hard at work designing the next generation of Hippodrome. Not licensed for use on atmospheric worlds, or at least not those that aren't tenuous, the Hippohippohodromes are being prepared for the latest innovation. Baxies on Scarabs. Yes, after much hype, 
it appears that the two-up boot-down, armed to the teeth with no room for luggage, Scarab will finally be making an appearance next week. Commanders will be able to load up with a buddy, riding topside like a charioteer and whooping as they hang on for dear life while sowing the seeds of destruction from their turret position. The racing and media moguls have unearthed ancient footage of chariot racing and reckon that this is just the kind of entertainment the public needs to watch whilst on the long journey to Colonia or sitting in an icy wing watching the limpets go wibble, 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 picking everything up. A no-holds-barred contest for two driver teams. The race will see scarabs in a destruction derby not seen since that car chase in the Blues Brothers or Arthur Goes Bananas. Um, the name Herbie was retired after the copyright holder decided that being associated with bugs was a bad thing. The objective? To survive. The regulations? There aren't many. You can't customise your scarab, though custom fuel loads and ammunition are permitted within existing engineering boundaries. Scrutineering involves checking the drivers wearing a remlock just in case, and that's about it. There are no details yet on whether the Federation of NPC Pilots will be invited to the cruise or whether it's only Pilots Federation members that are allowed to take part. But we're eager to see the start of the season, the team liveries, the pit walk, and of course, as with Formula One from the year 2021, the drivers attempted to punt each other off the circuit at every opportunity and claim it was a racing incident. Now, if only we could airdrop these combat beasties over a war zone. For too long, the Pilots' Federation has tightly controlled exactly who you're allowed to talk to. Your designated mission giver. The lady at the passenger's desk of the nearest tourist hotspot. Maybe the guy you pay your fines to. Okay, so you're allowed to chat to your friends. And maybe the engineers, if of course you've crossed their palm with cat videos first. But other than that, well until recently, you've been limited to just staring out of your cockpit window at them, or as per the previous article, writing rude messages on the galaxy map. Earlier this year, to much cheer, the bar at your local station was opened, along with a handy little corner shop selling a random selection of weapons and armour that the proprietor picked up at the local cash and carry, and a selection of colourful individuals. You could chat to the guy sleeping on the sofa, or stare in wonder at the couple at the nearby table having an intimate tete as hit. None of them would respond. In fact, the most you got out of most people was indignation that you were standing in their way, possibly with a, you looking at me, mate? Of course, the most chatty individuals were the ones hanging around on the corners of corridors. The whispered invitations, the sly looks, the just need a little job doing chats. Or of course, the security patrols, whose conversation was limited to, um, Boy, I want a word with you. And then possibly some punctuation courtesy of their sidearm. But the powers that be have now licensed a little more conversation down on planets. From next week, people will actually want to talk to you. What about? Well, we know not. We've heard a rumour that will include stranded pilots at crash sites, random strangers at settlements, and maybe, just maybe, mysterious contacts mid-mission, maybe trying to persuade you not to assassinate them. For the time being, though, it's back to simply emoting your way across the galaxy. Talk to the hand, because the pumpkin's not listening. The temporary calm we saw last week has been broken by three pirate attacks, but generally the situation across Hutton space is fair, becoming good later. Our listener will no doubt be pleased to hear that order has once again been restored to the galaxy, as Barnard's star has returned to its rightful place at the arse end of the Hutton Systems League. On a brighter note, it is the only Hutton system currently below 40%, albeit only by a Nats Nadger on 39.7. 
This is, of course, if you ignore the three systems that are actually on 40%, the three being AVIC, ROS671 and Epsilon Indy. Further, in AVIC, Sirius Corporation are only currently 9% behind Hutton and have been a mere 3% behind yesterday, so let's insert a bit of daylight between poor little Hutton and the evil megagalactic corporation that only control 14 systems? Pah. Last week's brief pirate that attacking Kakari was clearly a test, as pirates have laid siege to no fewer than three of our systems this week. Trepin has been relieved as I speak, but PSPF-LF2 and George's pants are currently being given a jolly good rogering by the pirate filth. Yes, it's time to get your hands dirty in George's pants, and those of you with a Corvette persuasion should make like the very models of a modern Vice Admiral and get busy shredding some hulls. Well done to those commanders that answered last week's call and halted the slide of Ross 671, which had inexplicably sunk like a stone by 12 points in the previous week. A bit more of a push in there and we'll see them restored to a healthier position. Here in the Hutton Hot Pit Master Situation Room at the Orbital, or to give it a, its official title, uh, Broom Cupboard Number 2, we are waiting with bated breath. Not because some folks don't like us breathing, oh no, but because we're waiting to see which dump we've expanded into from Wolf124. I'd better get on with this reporter's floor mopping guy will be back soon for his tea break. Oh, the Pong. I can't believe he eats in here too. <laughs> Grand Maths Whiz, Vizier Hanky, Grand Kazi of all the Colonias, asked that Tuckers help Hot Coal fight in their war in Pytheus against societist Eri Dutorium de Civitas Dei, the foreign lot, and boost Hot Coal influence in Eel, Procol Harum, Centauri. At the overachieving end of the Hutton Systems League, we have six systems above 60%, including four over 70, including, as mentioned earlier, Wolf 124, from where we will jump to a dump shortly. Priorities this week are, if you want to truck something, boost Hutton, influence in Barnard Star, Avic, and Ross 671. Or, if you're on an adventure holiday and slumming it out in Colonia, Eel Procol Centauri. If you want to shoot something, clear the pirates out of PSPS-LF2 and George's pants, or help out Hanky in Pythias. Neither ammonia, snow, nor the rain bureau, nor stellar heat, nor gloom of galactic night stares these adventures from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. Here are some tales of events organised by fellow community members. As usual, links will be placed in Twitch chat and also in the description of the YouTube upload. If you don't mind us saying so, the Comfy Cannon crew seems to be obsessed with mollusks. Judge for yourselves after you've heard this message from Commander Mephisto. On the Comfy Cannon cruise, the last week was filled with researching different kinds of globe mollusks at waypoints 101 through 105. Cobaltium, Rosium, Nivium, Rutulum, Prasinum, and Ostronum. Today, Konsu arrived only about 50 light years from Colonia at waypoint 106, where for some, a variety of Lindagoticum umbrella mollusks await examination. The cruise will stay in the vicinity for the next few days before resuming course on the last leg of the expedition back to the bubble. The Wild Wild West expedition might have been shouting, Look Ma, top of the galaxy this week! And Commander, Commander Quicksilver has provided us with a little detail of what we've done, what they've done even, and where they're going next. This week saw the expedition arrive at Waypoint 13, our highest point of the expedition, a shared under 2,000 light years above the galactic plane. The S-type star, giant star in this system, provided glorious screenshot opportunities for the Queen, keen photographer. Much fun and tomfoolery was had at all our meetings this week. Our PC commanders also enjoyed canyon racing and SRV canyon jumping. 
Our next waypoint, waypoint 14, will see our intrepid commanders venture to our lowest point below the plane of the expedition. From here we shall utilise our carrier fleet for further exploration into a great unknown. Expedition All the Clouds in the Sky has finally been moving at a decent pace, but has hit a slight hitch. Commander Deluvian explains why. Against all odds and Flossie's predictions, on 30th of November at 2016 Zodiac time, we reach Spongu Nebula. Stunning view and a bit scary. First entry there, first entry as there is a good chance you are going to hit the exclusion zone of the black hole that is the central object of the system. The purple haze fills up the system and the view is really pretty. Yes, it was a long 78 days to get here, but on the other hand, we roughly covered already somewhere near 50,000 light years. We're going to stay here till tonight, at least. Due to technical problems, Commander Dracomenda was not able to participate in our latest activities and because for us he is a key member of the expedition, we're giving him a chance to look outside the window and enjoy the view. On the other hand, that is just our first actual objective that we can now mark as completed out of our list. If we trust Commander Marks, and I don't see the reason why not, the galaxy is populated with 246 large nebulae of which 163 are procedurally generated and 83 are the real ones. There is one that we know of that's unreachable because it's inside of a permit locked area. Bly A5 Yei H30. Well, and then of course, the Cat's Eye Nebula. But I've an idea for this one. We will be turning around and headed towards IC5217 and that also means we'll be crossing the actual Formidine Rift. Let's see what the future brings. Stay tuned, Commanders. The Magellan Experience has set off on the expedition that is wending its way across the galaxy to eventually end up at Magellan Star. And the proud Commander Richard Fluvianis M wants to let us know how their guests got on as they started on their way. Well, the Magellan Experience, we had uh, three successful mass launches for the day shift, we had more than 60 participants and we had Sally Morgan Moore as special guest from the Pilots Federation, almost creating a tragedy when she accidentally rammed a member of the Stellar Nebula project by accident by boosting. Fortunately, nothing bad happened and we had a great mass launch. For the night shift, we had a reduced number of 30, but we still made a great example of a launch and uh, we had eight people on the very early mass launch the Magellan Experience staff sends a big thank you to everyone for behaving. As of right now, we're officially launched, with some people being at waypoint 4 of the expedition's total of 22 already, but are taking their time exploring. The latest 5 Euro tour, the Southern Nebula Journey, is barreling along and Commander Hunter has obviously been multitasking as he's been able to fly and send us a message which probably explains why it's short. Hello everyone, the 5 Euro Tour is hitting its halfway point this weekend as we approach the Crab Nebula. With nearly 6,000 jumps combined, we've travelled over 330,000 light years. Another commander has fallen and will be dearly missed, whoever they are. The fantastically frigid trip to Triffid is just about to set off. If you miss the launch, you can still scan their high wake signature if you're quick. Richard Fluor and his M had time to tell us more about this expedition with an emphasis of helping new pilots. The fantastically frigid Triffid Nebula trip is launching today. Albeit a bit reduced compared to Magellan with just 35 people, these individuals are ready to have fun celebrating the Sidewinder Syndicate's 5th expedition. See you on launch at Hutton Orbital. And finally this week, Commander Omega Megalith is very ne nearly packed for his exobiology-focused long-range expedition that sets off tomorrow. He sent this communicator to let us know just how excited they all are. 
First and foremost, thanks to Hutton Orbital Radio for hosting Nexus on your show. It means a lot to me and many of the other commanders. Our group is no better than any other, but what separates us apart from the rest is that we are multi-organisational. We don't care what squad you come from as long as you contribute to the cause. Each day, more and more players come in to be part of this. Some are curious and some are adventurous, wanting to head out to the black, and that has the founders highly motivated to do their part. In fact, some fleet carrier captains got a head start to the black and some are leaving a couple of days in advance. Unlike other groups that have a leader and structure, here in Nexus there are no leaders, only mentors and those who want to explore. The fleet carrier owners make the majority of the decisions, I merely make recommendations on route planning. Carrier owners are the heart of this operation and we relish seeing just how these amazing investments can keep us sustained out in the deep. We really didn't think this trip would get as big as it has and it hasn't started yet. What gives me the confidence to help organise this event are the many, many commanders wanting to be part of it. Some sceptics have claimed that there is nothing between the errant marches and Vulcan Gate region. I beg to differ. This is a big galaxy with big space and a lot of unknown out there. What made us decide to head this way was that not enough of these two regions have been explored. And while there are others going to more dense areas where plenty of commanders have gone previously, few have travelled this way. And so we want to be the discoverers and scientists of these two regions. Since many of us have yet to depart, there will be a departing ceremony in the Brani system at the fleet carrier Legacy of Dawn, as the owner is a teacher when not in his ship and his students wrote a good look letter to the members of the expedition. More details are in the Discord page. If I can put one word to this expedition and the emotions that I think most commanders are feeling for this trip is ambitious. Therefore, whether anyone comes before or catches up after departure, you have the ambition to head into the black and that says a lot about you and your character. Be part of this and help make this experience an amazing memory to look back on and say, I was part of that. Thank you all and wish us here at Nexus a fun and amazing journey ahead. And that's all of the community events news that we have this week. Email I took part at huttonorbital.com to get yours included. And we're back in the banter bit of the studio. Um, Amelia, 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 Amelia. Yes, Amelia, yes, yes. I, I need a yes. word out of you. Okay, a word. Any word? Well, the, the, that word. one, yeah, the one that begins <laughs> with the... And I've got to put another word in front of it. Not. <laughs> Not. Seamless. No. No. <clears throat> yes, the tape deck in the corner I mean, we went on the blink halfway it, through that. It's, oh, no. <laughs> it caught fire. There's smoke everywhere. Um we put it in out with a fire honesty, extinguisher. Yep. In all honesty, it was relatively seamless. That, yeah. well, that it, it, it is for those of you listening live, but mm. um, for those of you not listening live, um, about sixty seconds ago, you may have noticed some stitching. <laughs> well, they wouldn't have done mm. it for not listening. Well, yes. <laughs> There may be some stitching. Yeah, they'll fix it in the edit. Mm, yeah, it, it, we'll fix mm. it in the edit. We'll just put a rotating logo up and, yeah. um, uh, I don't know, nab the sound from somewhere. Or make it up. I've, I've just stuck this pencil in this cassette and I'm winding all the tape back in it. Yeah, I, it's yeah. not going to happen. It's not going to we'll work. Have, it never yeah. does. It never does. We'll have to get, we'll have to get that radiogram sandy done and revarnished. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm more concerned about the, um, yes, the, the, the fireproof foam that we sprayed on it and it's, yeah. it's gone hard now and um, we'll have to crack it off a bit. I don't know where you're going to get one of those big horn things for it again. I mean, that's... You know. Yeah, I know. And the dog. I, <laughs> the just dog, that yeah. poor dog. 
<laughs> so yeah, how's he going to listen to his master's Still voice with his ears yeah. full of um, yes, fire, C- fire yeah, retardant? Yeah, if the, yeah, so you've got the phone's gone hard, you've got to crack one out. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Something like that. I see. I lined that one up, but it took you all of a minute to to, to knock it. You down. know that yeah. wasn't. You know that Seamless. wasn't fire retardant phone, don't you? That was <laughs> well, that's expanding. That was expanding for mm-hmm. uh, I've got a, I've oh, got a, a story about work. that. Yeah. I got a story. A, a very good friend of mine was uh, molding a new seat for his racing scarab, and yes. you, you, but you, you have this bag, and you, you, you fill the bag up with the two compounds, and then you, you seal the top, and you sit in it in the cockpit of the scarab, and it molds itself round your, your asp. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he misread the uh, the units and put ten times as much of both compounds in there as he was supposed <laughs> to. So he sat in his scarab. And it started getting warm under his backside. And then it expanded and it kept expanding. And he was always just getting a bit funny. And then it expanded around him and then it burst. Oh! And I so the expanding he's foam. Still sitting there with his face he's still inside sitting there. His and he was wearing shorts. Oh, oh. no. So, um, yeah, he, he struggled to get out the scarab. He couldn't get out the scarab because he was wedged in a seat by the foam. And he called for help, and then his son had to come and rescue him from the scarab and realised the only way to get him out was to yeah, sort of crack it and pull him out. Unfortunately, it attached itself to his leg hairs, as foam that solidifies does. And his son then had to pull all this expanded foam off his dad's legs like some kind of evil waxing experiment to get him out of the cockpit of this car. Uh, sorry, SRV. And, um, yeah. Do we have a sound effect for emphasis? Oh, oh. Yeah. Some, something like Velcro. It's sort of like crying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was definitely screaming involved in that one. And, and he said his legs were, his legs were sort of bright red because the foam, unfortunately, is slightly caustic as well. So his legs were mm. bright red and they, it gets hot. So he had mild, sort of whatever degree burns to his legs and no leg hair left. And it had gone up his shorts a bit and he was most displeased. And then he read the bottle and realised that um, he was supposed to use, you know, 100 mil, not a litre of the stuff. Oh, God. Anyway. Don't have nightmares. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> no, yes. by all means, have nightmares. Yeah, no, do, do, do have nightmares. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, two weeks on the trot. And last yeah, week, no. I think that the, the seams are all are all Harry Ballsack created scenes because last week no Harry Ballsack no <laughs> seams this week Harry Ballsack uh, back there are seams uh, it's early yet yeah. <laughs> there were no seams when you were here mate <laughs> oh, yeah. oh no did you come uh, back and broken stuff yeah well it's it, a bit a bit like the year 2021 uh, somebody must have walked under some black cats and yeah. um, kicked a ladder and um, looked in the mirror wrong or something and uh, yeah all I can see is since you've been back I've been missing the early nights <laughs> well, it was a long. <laughs> this is oh, you can't blame me for that one. Um, yes, I can. Oh yes, we can. Oh, yes, we can. Blame, and we shall. Oh, yes, we can. Blame Pantosine. the forty people that joined the green room and and the no, rock papers. No, 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 no. There were that. two. There were two. There were and two. you dragged the third one in. There, yeah, there were two and a half. Yeah, no, there were two. You dragged one in and spoke to them all for forty Talk minutes. That's where you get the number right. forty for them. Just, just to to, to, to prove a point here. I didn't get interviewed during the green room bit. And you didn't have to. We didn't to. have no, time. No, no, no one lives that long. <laughs> and therefore, it can't be my fault. That's all I can say. <laughs> anyway, um, it's um, I, I, as is usual for the talky bits, we do have a little set of crib notes here on the screen. And I'm, um, Where? I'm actually going to do them out of order because that top one is related uh, to the lower one and it's out of order. Yeah. So we... speaking, speaking of cribs. Yes. Go. Go. Yeah. Um, we got birthday. a happy birthday, a baby Duval. A baby Duval. Yeah, a little one. There's a new one. Now, does yes, anybody sir. know? I mean, obviously, the, the the whole family history of the Duvals is a little bit complex. As in, who's actually emperor? Who's not? Who tried to murder who? Who's not? Who's illegitimate? Who's not? This one. Does anybody know this Duval? I mean, maybe does Wotherspoon it, knows, but um, doesn't matter. They all come out of that. Yeah, they all come out of that. <laughs> yes. Sticky and screaming, and yeah. Yeah. But there's a new baby Duval. Apparently not in line of succession, I suspect. But No, well apparently Hadrian's not so I would imagine Baby Duval probably isn't. Unless either. there are a few assassinations and that sort of thing, which is yeah. not out of order for the uh, mm. the Imperium there, the Empire. Um It's kids kids plotting already. Yeah, I know. Et tu Brute and all that. Or uh, et tu Hadrian. Um <laughs> so yes, happy birthday to Baby Duval. It has a name, this this new baby Duval, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Hector, yeah. isn't it? Hector he- Mordanticus. Yes. <laughs> and Hector... Who calls a baby Hector? Oh, His know. parents, H- you H- H- Yeah, Hadrian, I suppose. <laughs> Hadrian and yeah. Hector, yes. yes. It was King Priam, wasn't it? What, mm. Hector? 
Yes. What was Hector? What was Hector's mum mm. called? Mum. Yeah, yeah. Well, to Hector, Mrs. Yeah, Priam. Mrs. Queen Priam. Priam. <laughs> well, Queen Miss, Mrs. Priam Duval. Lady Astrid Minerva Duval. Oh, she's an Astrid, right? Well, okay. Apparently, he's already been a Hectorina. Already married to Andromache, <laughs> isn't? Isn't Hector Andromache? I think. Hecuba. That's his mum, Hecuba. There we go. Don't know. We need to speak to the Hutton genealogist, the royal genealogist. Yes. Who's that? <laughs> anyway, well, uh, Hutton, I, I think... Royal correspondent. I, I think his name's Homer. Simpson. Yeah, no, no, oh, dear. Mm. He adds an odyssey and all that kind of thing. Right, um, so uh, the, there was a live stream Super Cruise News bonus broadcast from the Pilots Federation, number 52, with Zach and Bruce this week. Tuesday. And, and special guests as well, I think. Well, well yes. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole point of uh, Super Goose News, as it's news, was to tell us all about Update 9 this week. So it's news that there is going to be news, rather than Hutton News, which tells you what was actually in the news. They're just warning you for the news. Uh, yeah, I think so, yes. Right, okay. So is, is no one going to ask anyone if we actually saw it? Well, you never do, personal. so it's kind of... It's kind of I did, but not in the I... order that they broadcast it. I watched the second half, and then went back and watched the first half afterwards. I think I saw some of it in Tuesday. I think I kind of went, oh, that'll be on now, and watched some. You know, mm. but so I never saw any of we, it. We I learned the actual news part. I just saw the pictures. We learned that the so, Pilots Federation can count to nine. Yes. So wait, wait till they get to a... Eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Yeah. That's only if they that's, get the shoes get and to, socks off. They only get to eleven if they count all of their fingers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, um, so uh, they're saying next week date TBC. Yeah. Well, they said mm -hmm. next week. Uh, they haven't said on which day yet. I bet it's on the same day as the war zone update. Anyway, never mind. Or the um, same day as Hutton Orbital News. Uh, yeah, it could be. Could be. Mean, um, meaning everybody will be crashing the servers and things. What's, yep. That's excellent. What's I'm off next week. Off what? Off work next week. Past it's your great. best I'll before be date. I'll, I'll be at home not to see, not to be able to download a player. <laughs> <laughs> um, when's traditional? Is it update day is? It varies these days. Usually it's Friday Monday. at about midnight just before everybody goes home, isn't it? Uh, Tuesday. When, Tuesday, 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 Wednesday, yeah. normally. Yeah. So, so anyway, there was this, there come, was this wonderful voice comes. in the background there that, that reminded me of something. By the way, anybody ever watched that um, uh, claymation animation Rex the Runt? No, no, no. I'm okay. going to say no because I've no so, idea what you're talking about. Uh, so, so Vince quietly piped up halfway through every single episode Tuesday. And a little voice just did that to me, and it was oh, it just reminded me of my 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 university years. Anyway, yes, Flossie, Tuesday. Um, so, <laughs> so update nine is Spaghetti. coming. This is oh, for Odyssey. If you if you're not of the Odyssey, Odyssey um, sort of bent, then uh, you can stop this way. Well, well, well. No, you say that. I sort of heard that potentially these multi limpets might not be an Odyssey exclusive. Was there something that isn't Odyssey? Oh, no, it's in it's Horizons as well. It's yes. It's Horizons 2. Um, you, I, we've I was... got a massive patch to download for and, it, and, but... and by the way, with my professional head on, I'm going to say, just for this one, Pilots Federation, I hate you for that. <laughs> oh, you've made my life difficult. Anyway, I'm going to... You have to do everything twice. I have to do everything twice now, yep. So as what's going to be? It's like Christmas present is, what is it? Well, it's easy. You just listen to Hutton Orbital News that we didn't record earlier. So we we can update Nine's there under the tree. We've given it, you know, we've picked it up. We've seen how heavy it is. We've given it a bit of a shake. Is Sniffed it left up? You, yeah. Yes, you felt it, your presence. Is it, is it whining? Is it making? Is it ticking? Is it? Anyway, <laughs> yes. what's in it? What's in it? Well. well uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Palantir, please uh, take Optimi the first Optimization item. and fixes. Optimization. Uh, more, more optimization. More. So it's better more, optimized. More optimization, more fixes. You mean Lots the frames per second goes above 60? Oh, shit. No, well, I'm not There's no confirmation of any of that. It's just better optimized and there are more fixes of stuff that wasn't fixed it's, previously. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a general thing that basically says, look, we haven't just been working on these new things. We've been working on other stuff as well. So don't say what have you been doing all this time because we've been fixing stuff. All right. Well, and putting this is this is the first one with major new stuff in though, isn't it? Uh, mm. I'm going to say no, but I can't think what the last major <laughs> yeah. uh, the was. last one the last one had uh, did it not have some mega ship interiors? Mm. 
And no. Had... Uh, yeah, it did actually. It did, you're right. I was else, thinking about well. Fleet Carrier Interiors. Well. No, Fleet come. Carrier Interiors have yet to come. It's something yeah. else in it as well. It did have a. Have, they, have, they, have they revealed the name of it yet? Name of what? Update 9. No, the the yeah, mm, any of the stuff that's in there. I mean, you know, bits and bobs. Oh. Are they just sort of, oh, the name alluding of the, the, alluding to the things? The name of the new the new SRV. Well, well I, that, we uh, know we know you're dying to talk about that, but can we can we do the combat well, SRV no, no, say, later? Well, we we can we can we are going to do that one later. But there's that one, but there's also the this this new Liberty thing. But we're going to talk about that later. No, well, we're going to we talk about that right now because it's next. <laughs> it's like the next thing on the list so you and know somebody's got a button for that we we do you know well, key... if if you programmed it in and i would actually remembered to put it in the banter slideshow uh, <clears throat> well, it's, yes it's it, it's the same it's the same picture as new story one well yeah, except, except new story one is a bit more because i i took out the pictures of the uh, of the people <laughs> of the people and put put in fancy limpets uh, <laughs> a limpet with, put a limpet with with a one limpet with a fuel hose hanging out of it and another one with a swiss army knife now you see before it. before you before you go on i'm just just uh, oh here we go i found i found the pictures what so we got oh crikey i've got them all out of order i dropped them on the floor earlier and it, it's it's um uh, hang on a second uh we got one of those and then one of those and um hang on a second You've just passed yeah, me another I'm one. I'm definitely the one creating the seams around here. Mm. Yeah, no, no, there's a... There, there's, yeah, there's yeah. One oh, there. yeah. You, you did, because you put these in there. I'm sure you did. You see, that's... Uh. I, I put them in the script and told you where they were, mate. Well, yeah, <laughs> but you don't think I read the script before we went live? I mean, does anybody here read the script before we go live? All, all that extra Yeah, I do. You. No, I just... Well, funnily I enough, I've got it just perfect, and it should be on screen now. It is. Well, it is. It is. Yeah. So, you can see that... The, Two handsome chaps there. Well, as as talented as they are, they are merely presenters. So what they did, and you know that game, uh, Frontier game devs are a bit like buses. You know, you wait ages for one and then two come along together. Well, they had two in the live stream. What, you mean they're, they're bright red and they have two decks? Two no. decks? I mean, oh. that's a for Rebel Rocks. So they dragged um, from the... Uh, from the, uh, the 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 frontier factory, the um, the young, a young chap called Derin, who's a game designer, and he talked us through the multi. Now, Derin is not somebody we've met before. Is is Derin? Der Derin is a I, new. I, I think he's been around a while, but I, I'd never seen him before. I think no. he did in his in his spiel, and you can go back and watch the live stream, of course, on YouTube and and Twitch. But uh, I've not seen him before, so he, he you can probably figure it out from from looking at this table. Um, but he, he he was at pains to stress that the existing uh, limber controllers that you may have fitted to your ships won't be redundant. And, and these multi-limpic controllers, whilst they might do more in less space, they won't be as efficient as the dedicated ones. So it's, you know, there's a, there's a sort of balance to be struck here. Um, and the way that you can you can see, I'm just going to go to the picture. You can see the they've they've done it by role. So you can read across the top: Xeno Rescue Mine operates in Universal. So the or, Universal, or the, or the Blue Ranger, the Green Ranger, the Camo Ranger, the one. yep, the Rainbow Ranger, and the Red Ranger. Yes. So is, what's the Universal one? Where's the Rainbow ones? Ranger? Rainbow must be, must be. Um, and they're all. Uh, they all control three types of Olympics, except the mining one, because obviously you only need And the two. universal one. Well, the universal one, but that's a size seven. So that'll only fit in a size seven slot on your ship. So if you haven't got a ship with a size seven, you're not going to be able well, to... Size seven so is what, 256 tons of cargo or something, isn't it? It's massive, isn't it? Yeah. 128, isn't it? 120, Definitely yeah. for people who want to be having a really, really multi-purpose vehicle. That's right. It's like it's like the the twenty blade Swiss. Oh, I don't know what's the biggest one these days. Oh, like that big wide one. It's about a foot wide and has got everything, yeah. including a, a pump for your tires on like, your car. And, has yeah. a has wheels on it as well, so you can carry the damn thing around. You drag it around. Um, so you know the, the the stress was this this just allows you to do more stuff in less space, but don't expect it to be as good. So you you may, you may fit one of these things. You may not. I mean. It's up to you, really, isn't well, it? Well, here's the thing. I mean, looking at the Zeno one, yeah, yeah. you could fit two limpet controllers or three, you know, for your decontamination, your place. Because I always need 
both of those things to scrape off the goo and then patch the damage up. So you'd take up two slots. Even if you were just putting like a, a tiny hmm. Olympic controller, you'd take up two slots. So yep. I can see that would be really handy because the other one I'm going to put lots more armor in so that the little thuckers that fly around and try and kill me <laughs> do less of the killy and um, yep. yeah, I can do more of the fixy stuff. So yeah, I, I, I get that one. That's that's quite good. And you and you're not particularly in a rush. So does efficiency really matter? You just you just want to do it, and whether it takes two minutes or five minutes doesn't really matter. Now with mining, of course, you you want to be efficient. So yeah, Amelia, chime in any at any yeah. point here on mining. <laughs> We're talking. Mining. We're talking your gig. Yes, you are. I, I know, and I'm, I'm listening. I'm. I'm very attentive. So, I mean, honest. Uh, you wouldn't. You wouldn't want um, your collector Olympic control to be any less efficient than it already is. I mean, I don't know how many lasers you've. But you could there. want your prospect Olympic to be more efficient. Uh, uh, yes. See, yeah. see, you you forget that I do mining marginally for the zen-like state i achieve while doing it so, oh, so you're not in it for the money so you go on why would i be whittle, whittle, i'm whittle, rich whittle, whittle. right okay on all miners do you also <laughs> mine in a type 9 amelia i do type 9 yeah. is my bag baby then you have no need for mlcs you have got plenty of room for olympic yep. controllers That's right. yes yes i have mm -hmm. can i can i confess i did my um the, the, the sort of the, the billion credit mining that I did, I think it was during one of the going for gold things in a Type 10, which was mm. much more fun. No spoilers. Oh, yeah, that's got spoilers. No, no, yeah, that's got spoilers. spoilers all yeah. Well, you saw I went to, I went to Beagle Point and went. Mm. Because you all had walking the about massive huff. and it wasn't fair. Yeah, the massive huff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm sorry, be Flossy. Bring in a picture later. Do, do yeah. any of these? Yes. Press the right button. Do any of these appeal to you? These, you know, these rescue rangers or the, um, you know, the rainbow one or? Um, I mean, the rescue one. I would need to know more about them, really. Uh, it's a fuel rat special. Yeah, it is yeah. really, isn't it? Because you've got fuel rat and whole seal in in the same yeah. Olympic controller there. Fuel and repair. Yeah. I'm not really clear on the operative one, collector. Yeah, so the, the operative one is the, the, collect hatch <laughs> the collector recon and hatchbreaker. The operative is is for breaking into yeah, that's, uh, those mega that's ships. Salvage as well, that would be good for. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and then the there's the the rescue one has also got a hatchbreaker because apparently you can rescue people from hatches on mega ships yeah. or derelicts yeah. or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. can you? Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. you can. <laughs> But obviously, they, they, yeah. they don't just come out. They come out in an escape pod. They, they do. Like, well, they eject. Yeah, they don't like, just. They don't. Doesn't just eject bodies into space. And you've got to get them really quickly before they go blue. It's, it's like baby seahorses. <laughs> sea monkeys. Right. Sea monkeys. Yeah. So, Flossy, when, when you're fuel ratting, mm -hmm. you obviously take your um, refueler debris. I mean, do you, do you take like five refuel limpets and just spam refuel at these people, or? Or how do you, or do you just take a single one, or how, how do you do your well, um, fuel ratting? Just a single one, because you can you can only do one at a time anyway. Because if you try to fire more than one at a time, any further ones will just be destroyed. So, or so ha the having the second one won't act until the first one's finished. So, turning your refuel limpet into something that oh, oh well, I want to repair you while I'm here as well is is quite handy for fuel rats. You can repair it, yeah, you can repair it at the same time. That would be handy, mm. yeah. What Without a, what a separate one. What it might do as well is cut down your, might extend your range just by a tiny amount if you can cut down the number of limpet controllers you're carrying. Yeah. Lumpets? Yeah. Lumpets? Well, one, lumpets? Mm. I said limpets. Oh, 11. Right. Okay. Eleven, eleven. <laughs> 11 lumpets. <laughs> 11 lumpets. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, a, and a battered sausage. <laughs> so. Uh, I think we've basically got to, got to get these things and <laughs> and try them out. Yeah. Now, the bit we don't know how is how you program them. I mean, is it um, that that your um, your fire groups just have the three options available in them, or is it? You know, well, I'm they curious. Did they did uh, young Darren did explain this, um, and depending on which one you select, it'll it'll only offer you two uh, fire groups for the. So if you have the, uh, we're talking about the, um, the rescue type, for instance, 
Um, you can only allocate refuel and repair. You can't allocate all three, so you can't allocate hatch baking as well. So you choose in your fire group settings which are uh, fire groups one and two. Yeah, but you can switch one off and switch so you, you, you one, equip on, one you? item. You can one be, amount of power, but then you get an extra yeah. thing to stick in your fire group. Mm. So it, there are no new sort of buttons to push. I mean, you know, I've got enough buttons on this, you know, dashboard anyway. It's not extra buttons. It's just a, you set your fire groups. Mm. Up, you fit one of these, and you get extra yeah. stuff on your fire groups. Yeah, because you've get, you, you, you've only got fire one or fire two, so mm -hmm. so you mm. you you it, yeah, but fire the, one you can have five things firing on. Yeah, you can get complex with yeah, multiple you, of the same kind on. Yeah, you can, but don't forget that the uh, the Olympic controller will only appear as a single line in your in your mm. fire groups. Yeah. Whilst you, see, you can fire 10, 10 weapons if you mm. if you wanted to, they're all in different lines on your fire. Yeah, groups. and an Olympic controller can only fire one limpet at any given time. Yeah, so you could so, you could have them both allocated to one, but it can't fire two limpets yeah. if you press fire. Group so one. you're firing one type or the other type. Yeah, yeah, right. right. So that's going to be interesting if you went for the universal because you've really got to change it all manually. But, yeah. but the whole point of the universal is it's task specific, so it's very unlikely that you're going to want to fire more yeah, than two got, or three limpets at any one time. You've you know, got one, two, you're and not going to do Zeno. You're not going to be refueling somebody while you're you know. Uh, you see, scraping the Flossie, goo off the hole. I'm surprised because I was expecting Flossie there to be a, a CG where you know they start off with you know you get the size three of this, and then, you know the more tiers you get up, the better we have available, <clears throat> and then to be available as through tech brokers as mm -hmm. improved stuff rather than just stock things. And I, I, I don't know what's what's your feeling on whether is, is it right just drop them in like this or because previous new stuff i mean back back in the days when they had all the new lasers was it the large multi cannons or something we had cgs to determine you know how cool the gear was going to be mm, back in yeah. the day didn't we yeah. when yeah, the new awesome. large weapons were released and they they released certain types i don't know much about weapons <laughs> well they might still yeah. do that they might still do that next week maybe we never know there might be something coming up or maybe there's a type five, yeah, like two, three, five, sir. Pull the pin out, throw the holy hand grenades, and yeah. thine enemy shall be no more. And if, if you buy, if you buy the lake on type eight, they're already equipped. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell, you, I tell you what, I'm waiting for though. I'm waiting for having read Michael Brooks's um, autobiography of his uh, exploits in the galaxy. Uh, I don't know if anybody else read Michael Brooks's book. No, from when the Brooks official book. launch book for Elite Dangerous. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was ages ago. I know, but in that, the pilot had engineered point defence turrets that he could use offensively. Yeah. Mm. He also had massive uh, missile banks. Yes. Anyway. But yeah, you can have those, though. You buy the multi-missile launchers and it looks like you yeah, know, yeah. 4th of July or something going off outside Yeah, and then your ship. Your, your ship just melts. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> From the inside. So, like so a pop tart. Th then there was there was special dev guest number two. Well, it was yes. Uh, so bus number two that came along was uh, we've Dom. seen Dominic before. Dominic Cole. Oh, Dom. Dom's yes. a legend. Yeah. Dom, Dom's yeah. a, Dom's a hero. Yes. Yeah. So so the second of the three things we're going to talk about coming up in update nine are mission changes. So in update eight they added. Um, settlement NPCs where you can, you know, you wander around behind the storage crates or the back of the hab or wherever, and you come across some. I'm dodgy just quite worried about where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> some dodgy character um, who would be your mission contact and would receive missions from you. So they've extended this in update nine, so these characters can actually commission missions. So the dodgy people who hang around in corridors have been allowed out, is what you're saying. Well, so he's, he's a he's, mission commissioner commissioning missions. They'll be able to issue missions randomly. They won't, or you won't be able to go you oh, know, so find the guy on, under the lamppost. And it'll be a mission commission. Every... A mission commissioner issuing missions. That's the work. That's right. Where were you yeah. when you, I was trying no. to write the headlines for this week? <laughs> <laughs> and what? <laughs> a commissioning mission? No, bugger. Oh, <laughs> seamless. Oh, yeah. God. seamless. <laughs> So they're they're, they're making <laughs> missions, a, 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 you know, they're just adding another um, aspect to missions, which will be quite interesting, I think. And, and as I say, they won't be in the same place all the time. So no, you know, I'll, I, I'll, I I'll have, go and I see that question. dodgy geezer. I mean, with my with my testing head on, obviously. So you know, you go to a military base, 
a settlement and it's full of mm-hmm. security guards and, and you unship your sniper rifle and, and you, you lay about with wild abandon taking down these guys. I mean, is this mission giver uh, going to stand you pref- there? Can you blow them? Do they run are, away? Are you prepared for the answer to be, um, i got no bloody clue? Well, I'm just curious as to, you know, whether they stand there looking nonchalant as you murder everybody in the settlement, as Rampage is prone to doing. Uh, you and, know, then, you... and then say, I've got a wee job. Would you mind doing this for me? Yeah, you, you, look good. you look like you're good at killing people. You look a little bit handy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> is it just going to be on the station or are we going to have mission commissioners commissioning missions on outposts as well? On, uh, no, outposts, this is on set, settlements. Settle, settlements. So these are on foot. Yeah, the mission commissioners... Commissioning and issuing missions. On foot. Commissioning and issuing missions. Commissioning and issuing missions. Mission commissioners. Yeah. And of course you can negotiate with them. I wonder if they walk off. You know the negotiation. Negotiate. Yeah. (laughs) Negotiating commission missioners. Commissioning and issuing missions. You know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hang up my headline writing for the next month now. (laughs) You're in charge. (laughs) That um, sounds like all augmented bloody missiles from last week, doesn't it? Well, oh, I mean, this, this almost started. beats last week's <laughs> repetition. Oh, yeah. that again. <laughs> Can we add half to the end of it? <sighs> <sighs> yeah. Get lost. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I did. I tried wandering around the settlement looking for the commissioner. I quite, into- I quite enjoy <laughs> talking about a uh, uniquely augmented and modifiable class two rating BNs and missile rack with increased caustic damage and capacity. I haven't had mine. Uh, uh, mission mission <laughs> commissioner emissions. Yeah. Yes. Oh, emissions. We never mentioned emissions. Oh, well. Or omissions, like pushing the right button. Sorry, I haven't heard yeah, the tape. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Anybody will get a little bit of I was thinking so, of emissions. Shall, shall we just move on to the bit you all want to hear about? Oh, yes. go on then. The Combat SRV. Yay! Well, I lied. I made it up because there was no news about it at all. <coughs> now. <coughs> now. There might be next week. Push the button. Push the button. <laughs> I'll push the button. No, hang on a second. No, no, we're gonna, we'll go to this bit next. But um, there's no news about it other than it's update nine. I'm just going to go with some speculation on the name. Of yes. the Combat now, SRV. Now, so, so the current one is called the... Scarab. Scarab. Which lives... Scarabs live in... Egypt. It's a dung beetle. Deserts. Yeah. Well, it, it yes. could be yeah, the dung. Yeah. Think of other scuttling. No, a scarab, a scarab is a. Oh, a scorpion. Could be. That's Could a be. better oh. name than what you thought of, isn't it? Mm. Well, no. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is the na- exact name I thought of, and you hit it. When you're going to call it, oh, you're going to call it the camel. No, no. There are definitely <laughs> some strong rumours. The eye licking lizard. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Sting in the tail. Yes. Mm. It has a sting in the tail. I mean, it, it, you're right. It it does all fit, doesn't it? Mm, it does. Mm. It does. Oh, spoilers then. No spoilers. So, so that's that's update nine, and it's coming mm. sometime next week. To you. By 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 the way, the scorpion mm. was actually in the uh, the key art released in 2020 uh, when. Um, Yes, Horizons um, Art did release pictures of a scorpion. Right, so ah. the, the scorpion that was in those images, was it wheeled or tracked? Uh, no, there was a scorpion in the images, um, the, the art released by the Pilots Federation back in 2020 was a scorpion with wheels. Ah, okay. Mm. Now hang on a second, would, would, you, would you like me maybe to just see if I can save that and put that on screen? Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah, let's see. Mm-hmm. Well, let, in the meantime, let's, 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 let's uh, just yeah. Well, you, in the meantime, yeah. you do that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna locate that. Uh, I'm getting it. I'm getting you it. You can do that, and we can talk about digital dioramas. Well, we, we can't you because spell... we need the we need the pictures. Oh, we need the no, pictures. No, dioramas are already on screen. Pick the dioramas there. Yeah, there you go. You ready? Yeah. So, so some clever yeah, person. Yeah, spelled diarrhea wrong. In uh, <laughs> <laughs> some clever person out there, but. My my only issue with those look nice is that they do look fabulous. <gasps> it's like a little, take ten. S- little for, for, slice for our listener of the who's universe. listening on the radio station right now. Can somebody describe, you know, Flossy? You could describe what no, you see. No. Somebody, it's gone. Yeah, no, I take it away I again. Can, I can't see it's, it's on table. screen now. Oh, I can't last no, it's yeah, on yeah. screen. No, uh, yeah, yeah, that one. Hmm. Uh, a crate phantom sat on a rock. A type ten defender sat on another rock. An orca on some sort of uh, Rock. Platf- platform, <laughs> yeah. and the Cobra Mark III sat on top of Jameson's wreck by the look of it. Yeah, mm. also it is. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So, that's, so I think that's a community paint job in the, the Cobra as well. 
I've, I've got that for somewhere. But some clever person out there in uh, in Elite Land is producing these. But they, as lovely as they are, they are digital. Mm. Ah, and, uh, and how are you going to get glue all over your fingers if they're digital? <laughs> that's why I thought. Oh, that's, that's why I thought you meant. That's that's how am I going to get yeah. paint on the carpet? That's, the that's same why I thought you. the transfer stuck to my finger. Yes, that's, that's why I thought thing. you. That's why I thought you meant diarrhea. You get it all over your fingers and you can paint the carpet with it. That's really messy. From this, <laughs> from this moment forward, I'm going to Flossy. forever refer to Elite Dangerous as Elite Land. Yeah. Flossy. <laughs> Elite Land. Yeah. I think the apology officer earned this one. Here you go. I'm going to hand it over to you now. Take a run up from the back of the room, okay? Three. Okay. Two, you won't get me. One. You won't get me. You won't get me. Ow! <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I thought they were very good. I thought these. Yeah, uh, I think they're yeah, excellent. Yeah. I just, I just yeah. wish they were real things. I would, <clears> I would have one of those. They'd actually. be marvellous, wouldn't they? I like the, I like the Cobra one. I mean, I like them all. <laughs> I noticed they've gone for the. Shame they didn't do a Type Nine. Yeah, they've done the you know, minimum spoilerage on the uh, Type Ten, though. Hasn't the trouble, the trouble is though, again for for my sort of childhood brain is there's you know what's missing? There's no there's no banana. They, no, no scale. Scale. each, each one just got a banana for scale. scale. That no, well, that we're going to get tenor. complaints. I, I, Hang I, on, I, you I, see I, there's no banana. banana how do you, how do you, you know? Don't see it. Yeah, exactly. How do you know there's not a banana because on there? Because there's nothing. There's no uh, yellow pixel. Yep. <laughs> it's inside the glove box. Inside yeah. the it's outside the shit. Yeah. We are going to get complaints. I did say yes. We have no bananas in the promo for the show this week, and now we have two bananas. Don't make promises the rest of us can't keep. All right, yeah. fair enough. There's no bandanas either. Mm. Nope. Mm. Um, so, okay. Uh, so, we, we, we have a... There's a small plug. Hang on a second. Why, why have you handed me a small plug? <laughs> to, put in the small, to put in the small sink. <laughs> so we, we covered um, Operation Ida, the Holy Day. Hall. No, hang on a second. Is it Ida or is it IDA? It's in capital letters. Well, it's whichever it is. It's the Holiday Hall, um, and they announce um, some sort of events within events. Um, and one of them you mentioned was Beluga Limbo, which I thought sounded like quite good fun. Um, there's not the a lot limbo. Of Yeah, there's not a lot of detail here, but the, one of the events also is um, small ship killers, where you have to build a small ship in, fit it out in like 30 minutes, and then take on a cutter so they've got lots of stuff going on in that uh, in that event lots of small little silly things to do mm, that's good so and i couldn't find i suppose it was probably in last week's show where we had the link if we can dig that out and post it in the chat so people can go off and take a look i might have a go at that next yeah. week yeah yeah i was some holiday hauling mm, yeah now you have to do it in a hauler Anyway, we love Operation Ida, or is it Anti Ida, or IDA, or whatever it is. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll be reporting from Operation Ida or Anti Ida uh, in future weeks, possibly with our special stunt guest voice. Ah, uh. we shall see. We shall see. Anyway, Flossie. Yes. Next one's yours. Um. Yeah. Oh, I put the, I've put fuck, the picture up. I put, I put the picture up. Yep. There we go. Folks are drawing in the galaxy. Oh, Command folks. Commanders have been outdrawing the cat meme. Ed Astro. Oh, so, 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 ED Astro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so Flo oh, Flo well, Flossie, I mean, are, are you familiar with this particular cat meme? No. <laughs> I, I, I believe it's uh, two oh, young see. ladies on one side of the screen, one holding the other one back and the other one looking <clears> very <throat> angry and pointing, and on the other side, a very smug looking cat. Oh, sitting, yeah. at, sitting at mm. dinner table. Sitting at dinner table. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, how how are you? I mean, obviously, this isn't you know you can't go to your actual galaxy map and look this. Look at this. You have to look at it in Ediastro. Did you say Ediastro? Yes. So if yes. if if somebody hasn't already, they just post that Ediastro link, and you go to the Gal map. Um, <clears throat> you can you can see this meme. Plastered across uh, the galaxy, you know. So, so if I mean, just just going down the list here. If just, you had to draw a meme yourself, yeah, Commander mm. Palantir. If you just had to draw one mm. meme on the galaxy, if you had the patience, 
and the oh, well, skills. Well, there's, well, there's no point the then. <laughs> well, or the oh, talent. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Well, no. You'd throw all that lot at me. Of course, I'm not going to do it, am I? <laughs> no, no. Well, but, yeah. but, 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 but if you were going to draw one, one meme on the galaxy... Mm-hmm. One mm-hmm. thing to be forevermore etched into the, you know, the records of space exploration. What, what would you etch into the galaxy? And no, a you mug. can't choose the rude one. That's a mug. What the, Duh, has, yeah. has that been done? A no. banana for comparison. With yeah, a banana. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, so so yeah. Amelia's doing a banana. Palantir's doing a mug. Uh, apology officer. Uh, I, I would have to go for the red one on nothing at all. No, that's been mm. done. The, 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 the bug wally <laughs> has been done. <laughs> the bug wally. <laughs> Cock and balls has been done. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would do a hippo. Is there a famous hippo meme? No, but there's a famous hippo. <laughs> there will oh, be. frisky the, hippo. The frisky hippo, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and Amelia, if you were to draw one meme from the internet on the galaxy map to be you know, forevermore there on the galaxy map... A banana for scale. <laughs> a banana for scale. A uh, chicks. Well, it's it's bloody obvious, isn't it? I'd draw a hundred thousand light year wide moustache. Well, that evil oh, guy to scale then. Moustache. <laughs> yes, yeah. Mm. Oh, look at the message there from Beacon Jude. light years? Because that's the width of the galaxy. <laughs> the I mean, literally, there'd Beacon be Beacon giant mustachios from left to right, a bit like the the route that's to right. Colonia, but sideways. Yeah, I'd. Uh... Follow that the says, moustache and keep on till morning. Look so at, Be- look at the, Beetlejuice look at the says, show, yeah. um, I'm obliged to say that I drew a babel fish. Oh, Ooh, you see, that's got style. See, Beetlejuice always got more style than the rest of us. It's classy, yeah. yeah, classier than anything we would have done. Firing up Ed Astro now to take a look. Yeah. <laughs> You're firing up what? Dude, is, it, is it 3D? Right. So as you, uh, as you fly around the galaxy, can you actually see the babel fish correctly 3D from all angles? Otherwise, don't bother. Uh, no, he has to. <laughs> well, he does actually give you a side mm. view, but uh, no, I do wonder if anybody's ever done a three D one. See, there would mm. that'd be clever. You'd have to speak to LCU mm. about the programming to actually visualise it in three D. But could you? You probably mm. could do a three D something in there. Mm. And and Flossie, one meme from the internet. I don't know. I don't do memes. Just pick oh. a thing, then. Just anything. Well, Flossie, you there's there's an obvious one. But there's a really obvious one for you. There is a really obvious one. It's just a, a thing. That you're not, that I would have liked to have been involved in the, in the big, yeah, the big that one, but I didn't. I was oh, too right. scared. You could do, you could do, you could do a frying pan or a frying a, pan, a frying pan or a hamster. Ooh, yes, you could do a hamster oh, one. Oh, yeah. a hamster, yeah, yeah. So just write, just write the word poppy on the on the galaxy well, or something, yeah. Somebody's drawn hmm. a snake. No, no, that's the route to Colonia. <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's a snake. It's, no, it's no, actually, no, really it's, it's, it's level with Colonia, but it's on the uh, on the right oh, hand side. Dear. These explorers, they do go space mad, don't they? Right. Mm. Uh, so, uh, moving along, um, but, uh, are we going to? Uh, we haven't seen the other. Uh, ga- ga- yeah, well, I've, picture, I've pulled, I've pulled, I've pulled that one up. One. Yeah, the well, big one. The, I've, I've put a big you, one on screen. You see the. Uh, the one with the red circles, which which for those of you watching out. who are colourblind, we can't see the red circles. The the mm-hmm. two that's the other one, yes. And we can... bits. Uh, yeah, Pilots Federation carefully cropped their their version because they they <laughs> left out the thing in the top right hand corner, and you it doesn't matter what colour you're watching because I can barely see it. But uh, it's 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 what you expect. You know, people with too much time in their hands yeah, to, yeah. Uh, to draw. Or we'll LCU. Leave it. it was LCU. We'll, it's going to blame LCU. Was it? <laughs> we'll leave it there. Shall right. <laughs> uh, talking of things we should blame LCU for, mm. there's a thing that we, we, we had a message from um, some, <clears throat> some of the, the, the regular Hutton truckers that we really ought to broadcast something this evening because it's got mm. LCU in it. Yes. Is it milkshake? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Can somebody who's not me, may, maybe Palantir or uh, Flossie, who've both been heavily involved in such things in the past, please no, explain, no, no. Uh, apologise. Just people who sound like us. Hire, no, hire not, the apology I'm, officer to present apologies in advance for what's about to yes. come over the airwaves. We, are, <clears throat> we, would, we would like to apologise wholeheartedly and in a heartfelt manner for what you are about to endure. But we're not going to. And can somebody Promotion. please explain what it is before I put it out there? Promotion for... Dockers. The Barnard Star Dockers? 
are doing Beyond another Darkness. episode. Yeah, Beyond. a special, a special, a special. For Christmas. Ooh. And there's a Kickstarter associated with it which are trying to raise money. No, no, no. Did, oh, you see it for charity. A special effect. Charity. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. for charity. For charity, yeah. Charity. Um, and uh, do, do we have a link we can we can direct people to for um, such such donations? Um, should anybody want to do it? that um, kind of thing? Uh, um, I mean, I, I've got the link to the audio, but does anybody have the... Um, well, if the, you fire oh, I do, up the audio, we'll... Uh... We'll, no, I do, we'll I do have it. Tinyurl.com forward slash beyond Christmas. There you go. Tinyurl.com forward slash beyond Christmas is the way to donate to charity. 100% of the proceeds will be donated to special effect. Uh, basically, mm. if you like this, donate. If you hate it, donate. If you're going to complain to the BBC or the HBC or anybody else, donate. Uh, because that's what it's all about, um, being silly for charity um anyway there's a trailer i'm gonna hit a button i hope it works and um, you'll hear us afterwards or no you won't <laughs> seamless it came to me last night i know your purpose for being here i'm going to help you write the beyond dockers christmas special you think I can just whip one out? You know how those people freak me out? They get very contemplated. Oh, but I don't think, Simon. I know. I can tease it out of you. It's too hard. I'm sure it will come easily for you. All you need is to use your imagination. Just think of all the characters. Fanny Longburn and Willie Stroker making a documentary. David Brubin with his mugs. The mad monks obsessing about bio-waste. The unrequited love of Roger and Sebastian. Richard and May Swallow. Not to mention Han Sup playing with his number two. You do know Richard's dead, right? You! You dirty bird! How could you? What? He can't be dead! Richard Swallow cannot be dead! His, his spirit is the important thing. And Richard's spirit is still alive. His legacy shall live forevermore in all of us. So take his spirit and move forward. This is the fourth time we've gone through this. I don't want his spirit, I want him! Him! And you murdered him! No, I didn't. Who did? No one. He, he died. He just slipped away. Slipped away? Slipped away? He didn't just slip away. You did it. You did it. You did it. You murdered my Richard. It's all here in the script. Crushed to death by Fargoids. It's what he would have wanted. I'm going to crush you, you cock a -doody dirty birdie. You're going to crush me? I don't think so, my laddie. You want some of this? Well, eat it. So you choke. I'm going to stuff you like a Christmas bird. You stick with the... The Docker oh, Christmas oh, special. Oh, sure oh, not the shoes. Not the shoes. No. Fine, turkey. Oh, not the breads. That's it. Donate to our Just Giving page at tinyurl.com slash beyondchristmas. And we'll make it even funnier. With our exclusive reward tiers, you could even end up being part of the show. An unsavoury part that nobody really wants. Don't miss it. At Christmas. Featuring one or more voices that Ooh. you may have already heard in other places. Mm. Yes, insect to come out. There was one. There were definitely at least two familiar there, and mm. they're often getting mm -hmm. too familiar. Those two, but um, yes, <laughs> was, was that sounded a bit like Commander Wotherspoon, but it isn't. Obviously, it's, it's somebody else. But yes, so Beyond Dockers, they're raising money for charity this Christmas by putting an episode out, and you can donate charity and maybe even have a part written for you. No. Oh. Yeah. Go I on. think I think that was a voice. I'd love to get my hands on your part. Oh God! Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> moving along, moving along. Yeah, so d- do that. Donate to charity, um, and and maybe you'll be in it. And yes, just go to that that tiny URL, and there are more details. If you give some money, we'll get you upgraded to first class. You get real tea. You don't have to suck on a tea bag anymore. Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, the first of December. What does it make you think of? Anybody? Advent calendars. Uh, anybody else? Calendar. Mm. Anybody else? Not Christmas yet. No. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe yesterday marks seven oh. years since something oh. really important. Oh yes. The advent of oh, something yes. really oh, yeah. really cool. A, the person yeah. who makes a flying helmet look cool. Yes. <laughs> Commander yes. Romeo, old Haji himself. Yes. yes. He was the very first person. In Elite Dangerous to make it to Sajay Star. Well, to, to, yeah. no, no, to, to be absolutely fair, the first mm. person anywhere <laughs> to make it <laughs> to Sajay well, yes. Star. Because and that was, that was before root plotting. You had to yes. pick which yeah. star you were jumped to next the whole way. Anyway. If that's qu- quite an achievement. Right, yeah, before, before, before we go to the next, I have no idea what the next paragraph's all about. I genuinely... Absolutely no idea. Uh, there we go. Spoiler picture. Shall we put that in it's for... It's a scorpion. Yeah. That was concept art. May not resemble the final product, but that was a 2020 piece of concept art for the scorpion. Well, that looks... You remember the, uh, the picture yeah, it looks that... Yeah, mm. Arf took... That weapon looks just like the weapon in the picture. Yeah. After now, can I say that, one uh, serious observation there, though, though, for anybody looking at this? Um, if you fire that, you don't want to be firing it forwards, otherwise, someone's getting a haircut. Mm. Of the, it looks, I've got no it, like it, it. it looks like it pivots up and forward, it does, doesn't it? It's like, yeah. Mm. yeah, but that like cockpit t- looks really deploying. exposed. That is a big ex- for a combat SRV with an all glass cockpit. Mm. Well, it's that, reusable, mm. modular, you know what I mean? They, they've just taken the, the cargo rack off the back and they've stuck a big gun on it. Now, I want to know, where's, where does number two sit? It's probably a lower seat with a periscope. <laughs> <laughs> or, next time I go out with Flossie, I mean, obviously, Flossie, I'm expecting you to get one of these so that next time oh, we do hi. some testing on the planet's <laughs> surface, in, uh-huh. instead of us taking a, a scarab each, I, I can hop in there. But it, it does look it's, like it's going to be a bit cosy in the cockpit. Mm. Doesn't it? Because mm. there's nowhere underneath mm. that to sit. I mean, am I going to stand on the back of the chariot racing one that we had earlier? I, I suppose um, I could stand on the back, just you know, holding the back of that gun, like you know, yeah, some kind of hero. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like a fifty cal on the yeah. top of a, a <laughs> daka, 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 Yeah, and I don't think because it's it's a repeater. The, the one we've got is um actually fires fires rounds it's not it's not an energy weapon mm. is it it fires rounds yeah mm. are there rumors that this one might be a different kind of weapon as well mm. what are rumors mm. this supposition yeah supposition mm. so guesswork guesswork yeah. right nice, um, nice plasma cannon so somebody quick let us escape from the banter bit before the audience completely yeah. turn off <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a method yes and it's written down yes, there it? i can see it yes <laughs> I couldn't resist this one. Who who wants to do it? Go on. I'll do it. Go on then. Now for a word that's never overplayed, overstated, overused, overvalued, belaboured, overindulged, done to death, or gone too far. A word that's everyone's friend. And as we've so often, but not too often, said, it's a brilliant choice for a safe word, because if you've forgotten it, you'll very quickly find it when you open a dictionary. Which explains why Zygo has gone out of fashion. Aardvark. Aardvark. Come on! <laughs> that was brilliant. Oh. Oh. And uh, I think we should hand over now, don't, don't you, Mr. 21, hand over to the apology officer to, to segue us into the next segment. I, I shall segue us in then, yes. Yeah, smooth. smooth. me. Right, smooth yeah. as a baby smooth. bun. Smooth! Yep. Right, so soon and you now... could spread it on ten slices a whole week. We just went. <laughs> and now the woman who puts the half into uniquely augmented, unmodifiable class two rating begins and miss a rack with increased caustic damage and capacity. Ha! Huh. It's the woman who'll tell you what to do if she doesn't run out of breath when trying to talk about 
you know, those things. It's Flossie with the CG News. It's Flossie. It's Flossie. It's Flossie. It's Flossie. And the community goes. Hello, Flossie here with this week's Community Goals News. Last week's CGs, both have completed following the successful conclusion of Fight for Epsilon Fornity's Empire Group by reaching Tier 6 at 11.13 UTC, um, I think that was on Monday. Fight for Neo Malinist Order of Madrid came second and the top 25% should receive their uniquely augmented unmodifying Class 2 Rating B Enzyme Missile Rack with increased caustic damage and capacity sometime on or just after Friday the 3rd of December. And this week's new CG, Deliver Rare Goods for Newborn Duval Celebration. Lady Astrid Minerva Duval, head of Hadrian, wife of Hadrian Duval, has delivered a baby boy at an undisclosed secure location while under senatorial protection. The child has been named Hector Mordanticus Duval. Despite Hadrian not being an official member of the Imperial family, many citizens are jubilant at the arrival of a new Duval. Nova Parisa has organised an initiative to gather rare commodities for its former leader to celebrate the historic occasion. Pilots asked to deliver Chateau d'Iguillon, HR 7221 Wheat, Indy Bourbon and Yasso Condi Leaf to Dyson City in the Paris system. To reward contributing pilots, Guttermeyer has agreed to an initial 10% price reduction to all Imperial ships, including the GU-97 fighter and fighter bays. A further 5% reduction will be applied per tier reached. This price reduction will be available in the past tier uh, Semies and Cubio systems only and will last for two weeks starting on the 10th of December. Imperial rank requirements still apply. In addition, ship rewards will be provided according to the following. The top 10 percent, the top 10 contributors will receive an Imperial Clipper. The top 25 percent contributors will receive an Imperial Courier. The top 75 percent of total of contributors will receive an Imperial Eagle. The ship rewards are rank free and cumulative. Ships will be placed in storage at Dyson City in the Parisa system for the 11th of December. The campaign begins on 2nd of December and will run for one week. If the target is met earlier than planned, it will end immediately. To earn rewards, you must sign up as an active participant before delivering Chateau de Iguillon. HR 7221 Wheat, Indy Bourbon and Yasso Condi Leaf to Dyson City in the Parisa system. And that's it for this week's CG News. Plus told you what to do. Thank you, Flossie. Now, if I read that rightly, it seems that with some friends and a judicious bit of teabagging, you could turn a Type 9 into an Imperial Clipper. Now, I'm a bit worried about this next bit. There was an earlier version of the News Digest which didn't actually feature Beetlejude. So, luckily, either Wotherspoon's come to his senses or Beetlejude's escaped. So, this version's bound to be better. Brewer 
corporation envisages micro-communities living in starports between the bubble and Colonia, according to plans revealed today. The 26 megaships deployed yesterday, together with the 30 megaships deployed as part of Phase 1 of the Colonia Bridge project, mean that a ship travelling between the bubble and Colonia need never be more than 500 light-years from a safe dock and an extremely bored Apex Travel Assistant. Next year's plans, which will start with an appeal on the 6th of January, will add a scattering of starports along the way. Brewer hopes that the inclusion of shipyards will mean that small permanent communities will spring up, helping to tame the 22,000 light-year route. Brewer has confirmed that the double-engineered frameshift drives that were offered as a reward for Phase 2 of the project will be on offer again for Phase 3. Admiral Aidan Tanner will be put on trial for his unauthorised attempt to gain access to Salvation's records at Hind Mine. Tanner took the megaship Musashi to Titori at the beginning of the month, and despite direct orders to leave the system, he spent a week trying to gain access to records that may have helped provide background information to the mysterious character known as Salvation. Tanner is convinced that Salvation's experimental weapon that was used in the Kornsar system has caused the Thargoids to attack harder and in greater numbers than previously. There is some circumstantial evidence that the invasion of Kornsar may have been a staged event. Tanner and the crew of the Musashi stand accused of mutiny and unlawful military action. If found guilty, Tanner will be dishonourably discharged from the Federal Navy and may spend the rest of his life in prison. Paul Bauman, who is heading the Bauman investigation into the management of Aegis, has issued a short statement indicating that the loss of life caused by Tanner's unauthorised military action is unlikely to paint Aegis in a more favourable light. Neither Aegis nor Taurus Mining Ventures have commented on the charges. Four new systems have been attacked by Thargoids this week, bringing the number of active Thargoid war zones to 21. The newly attacked systems are HIP 17497, HIP 17694, Pleiades Sector IH V, C2 5, and Delphi. The following newly attacked starports have requested assistance with evacuation Bow Landing, Hudson Observatory, Rick's Depot, and Donars Oak. It appears that Lyman Legacy in HIP 16753 has also had a follow-up attack during its repair work after the recent attack. There are now 19 stations requiring assistance with evacuation efforts. The effort to clear Thargoids from the Pleiades, Witchhead and Muscadark region is still making slow progress with the tail of the Thargoid resistance in Pleiades sector PD-S, BPOR-0 still not quite shifted. The superpowers are reported to be considering asking Salvation for assistance in clearing the Thargoid incursions. Repairs have been completed in two stations, Ark's Faith and Artemis Lodge. Another three are ready for repairs to start. These are Corrigan Terminal, Implied E Sector HR-W, D1-74, Goya Landing in HIP-16753 and Cheryl Orbital in Hackey. The California Nebula, despite becoming a Thargoid hotspot, has mercifully still not suffered any incursions or attacks on starports. The Imperial Herald has announced the birth of a baby boy to Lady Astrid Minerva Duval and Hadrian Duval. Hector Mordanticus Duval, who was named after Emperor Hengist's illegitimate son and Hadrian's father, Hector, and Imperator Kaiser Mardanticus, the one-time power behind the throne of Nova Imperium, was born at an undisclosed location where his parents are in hiding, under senatorial protection from the Neo-Marlinist terrorists. The birth of a son, who although not part of the official imperial family, is arguably in line to inherit the role of emperor, and moreover is male, something that matters in the more traditional parts of imperial society, seems likely to lead to concerns over a succession in the years to come. But for now, everyone seems delighted, with the Emperor and Princess Ashling delivering messages of congratulation. Following the news, 
Praetor Leo Magnus has resigned from the affiliated counter-terrorism unit to become full-time head of Nova Parisa, which is the new name for Nova Imperium. And he has requested deliveries of rare goods in celebration of the Imperial baby. Pilots are asked to deliver Chateau d'Agion, HR-7221 Wheat, Indy Bourbon and Yasso Condi Leaf to Dyson City and Paresa where they will be fumigated before being sent on in a massive convoy to the secret location where the happy family lives. Following the victory over the Neo-Marlinists in Madrid on Tuesday, ACT has confirmed that it's retaken the Steel Majesty from the NMLA terrorists. Captain Milo Castile of the Marlinist Constabulary led the team of commandos that took the megaship. However, Theta-7 remains on a sacrosanct megaship in Madrid, meaning that a significant risk of further terrorist atrocities remains. Epsilon Farnassus Empire Group, which has now taken ownership of the Steel Majesty, has, in a spirit of reconciliation, agreed to honour the payments offered by the NMLA for those who fought against them. And that's this week's Galnet News. Galnet News. We read the news so you don't have to. Thank you, Commanders Beetlejuice and Wotherspoon. I'm glad the other one came back, though Wotherspoon does his best, doesn't he? Talking of doing their best, it's time for the Hutton Helper results with Mia Harkness. Welcome to the Hutton Helper Results. The Hutton Helper Results are sponsored by the Hutton Helper, the only third party resource to come with a locked box, which clicks open on 1st of December to reveal a paper crown, mince pie, Christmas tree bobblehead, and a data stick with every Christmas number one for the last 1,000 years. This week we have the following events the No Escape from Christmas Endurance Sprint, the Tech 9 full of fibre optic trees, Seasonal Cup. The Handling Your Christmas Package Deja Vu Trophy The The Boys of the N NYPD Choir Blew My Ship Up Champion of Champions Championship The Now I Have a Sharp Cannon Ho 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 Officer John McLean Memorial And the Driving Home for Christmas Chris Rea Special So, deck the halls with boughs of holly Never ever ask how the fairy got on top of the tree And kiss it Happy Christmas You filthy animals this week's Hutton Helper results are Exploration, Marsantius again, is first with 67,000 light years travelled. Light 027 sold 171,000 tonnes of goodies to come first in cargo sold. The top mission runner this week is Mick R045 with 241 points. Alex Zuno claimed bounties to the value of exactly 1 billion credits. Darkbane Fox handed in just under 1,453,000,000 credits of combat bonds to top the table. Top place for passenger transporting goes to Darkness CS101 with 3,759 bums on seats. So, decals for Darkness CS101 still hasn't claimed theirs, Mick R045 and Darkbane Fox who won back in April but never claimed. There have been 28 Hutton runs in the last 7 days. 24 of those were from Impala Mark, whose fastest time was 1 hour, 22 minutes and 42 seconds, which puts them just 22 seconds off the record and in 10th place overall. Now, the return of Socrates Ectoplasm, who put in a blistering time of 1 hour, 22 minutes and 27 seconds, for third place in the rankings, Jon's got 1 hour, 35 minutes dead for 503rd place. A small furry rodent, that is 
commander, a small furry rodent, not an, not an actual small furry rodent, recorded in a, a time of 1 hour, 38 minutes and 18 seconds for 521st place overall. At the coup's tail this week is Ruby Doo. Ruby Ruby Roo, where are you? Well, it turns out they are arriving at Hutton after 3 hours, 48 minutes and 30 seconds. That's 601st place if you're interested. So, is your ship all ready to go with Christmas wrapping paper paint jobs? And you get your Christmas out for a bit of airing? Are you all dressed up in your best sparkly gear but not sure what to do next? Well, I have an idea. Why not go to hot.forthemug.com and download or sign up for the Hut and Helper before getting out there and doing whatever it was Chicks and Flossie said to do. I can't remember, I, I wasn't really listening, but you get the idea. Let's face it, anything has to be better than staying up all night and waiting for three spirits to visit you. Well, that's it for this week. Back to Studio 5. Thank you, Mia. My advent calendar contains bottles of Centauri Megagin. There are no numbers on the little doors, but after the first few, who cares? Talking of someone who by all rights ought to have a stiff drink before turning up to work, it's time for Amelia Hawke, our very own Braveheart, as she tells us what befell her in her quest to bring us all the galaxy's rare goods. Good evening. This is Amelia Hawke, reporting for the Galnet Rares Digest. We try all the galaxy's rarest and most dangerous commodities, so you don't have to. The rares of the galaxy come in all shapes and sizes, from morsels to monsters, from drinks to dangerous toys. But amongst the rares, those that are comfortable or comforting for just plain or just plain adorable, well, they're the rarest of the rare. This week, I've headed off to another terraformed Earth-like world, colonised by an itinerant group of naturalists. Yes, I misread that word the first time I saw it too. No, they're not naked. Yes, they love animals. The planet was found and terraformed as part of the saving of an incredibly rare species, the rhinoceros. Once found in vast numbers across the prehistoric Earth, the predecessors to the engineer, uh, uh, <laughs> endangered 21st century rhino. Ranged from the gigantic and terrifying and ever so angry to the timid and rather nasal tapir predecessors gentler cousins of their armoured friends. Large, stumpy and grumpy, the rhinoceroses became so endangered by the late 21st century that gene banks were kept and a continuous population became impossible to support. Along the way of the dodo and the red squirrel or, um, or the dormouse. As science progressed and the ability to extract and reassemble DNA from these smallest pieces of bone or tissue and reconstruct a full living being, it became the done thing amongst environmentalists to take near sterile planets, terraform them and create environments suitable for the reintroduction of these species. Vanaiqui is one such system, created to have a warm climate perfectly suited to the rhino. The beasts were engineered to survive in the thick atmosphere. Unfortunately, as luck would have it, the DNA recombination process threw up some rather dominant traits. These rhinoceroses were larger, hornier, angrier, and more vicious than their earthly cousins, and they grew to enormous sizes. The largest weighing in heavier than four bull elephants and terrorizing the colonists. One famed rhino, named Mr. Stampy, crushed four whole families underfoot in a fit of pique over their noisy Land Rover. The colonists began tinkering with DNA from Karma, 
smaller, more placid members of the ceratomorph family tree, aiming to create new species of rhino that were um, a little less prone to wanton death and destruction. They referred back to the works of famed Chinese paleontologist Yuan Qing Wang and his discovery of the Hierarchius, a smaller, more placid member of the family, and managed to dig up some ancient samples. The resulting creatures are very, very distant cousins to the angry prehistoric megafauna they created previously, only 1.5 metres high at the shoulder, most are smaller, and blessed with an incredibly affectionate temperament. The Vanayaqui ceratomorph is a far cry from their angrier relatives. One side effect of the Dr. Moreau style splicing of these creatures is that the ceratomorph is woolly, really soft and woolly, like they've just come out of the wash and had plenty of fabric softener. Their wool is some of the softest and fluffiest in nature. Combined with their size and their tendency to wander up and demand affection, this makes them possibly the most adorable large creatures in the galaxy. And of course, wholly unsuitable for a hot planet. A small population of them are kept in tiny polar regions on the planet, allowed to wander the tundra in peace. And if you've been paying attention to your rare trade run routes, though, you'll see that the rare item itself is Vanayaqui ceratomorph fur, fur coats, fur hats, fur lined boots, fur merkins, which on the face of it would be strange for a population dedicated to naturalism and the protection of a rare species. To find out more about how and why they're sold as part of the fur trade, I've headed down to the planet in the company of a guide. Trade in naturally grown animal furs is still frowned upon throughout most of the civilized galaxy, and by that we mean everywhere except the Empire. Trade in rhino parts carries a death sentence still, the only punishment strong enough to stop people lopping off their horns in the hope that it gives them super stud-like powers, which is stupid really, when there are pills for that sort of thing. The guide has told me that there's a family he's been following for 20 years now and has been explaining the fur that they collect is from animals that pass away naturally and only after being able to fully document and prove that they've had a full and natural lifespan. Each fur coat, each hat, each pair of wool lined boots is sold with a certificate that proves from birth to the day they pass. This has come from an ethically cared for creature, which explains the rarity. He's taken me to a section of tundra where his family of ceratomorphs are currently grazing, and he's signalling for me to be quiet. I can see them now, a large family group, an older matriarch, some younger bulls and cows, and Oh, the baby ceratomorphs, they're so cute, about the size of a small dog. They're so fluffy and they're large. At... Oh, my heart is melting. They're adorable. Oh, sorry, sorry, I couldn't help myself. Oh, crap, they spotted us. The guide is looking a little worried. He's telling me in whispered tones that the, the rhinos are affectionate. They have no natural predators. They're afraid of nothing and love nothing more than a lot of fuss and attention. That can't be bad, can it? Oh, they're coming. They're coming this way. They're running. Oh, oh the ground is shaking. Oh, hang on. Uh, hang on. Come back. Um, My guide, he's running away from them towards the grove of trees. He, he looks terrified. I, I, I suppose I better run too. Oh, they look so happy to see us. Oh, oh no. Oh, he's tripped over a root and gone sprawling. Oh, they've reached him. And, oh, oh my. Oh, they're giving him so much affection. Uh, uh, now I realise why he was worried. That poor man. The young rhinos have swarmed him like a, a group of overexcitable puppies. Hunt, oh crikey, a hundred kilograms fluffy puppies. Puppies. With sharp noses, sharp horns. They're, they're rolling onto him and have their, to have their bellies tickled. Oh, that poor man. Oh, I can hear him screaming. Oh, one of the bull rhinos just tried 
playfully nudging him and oh I can't watch. Oh my god. Oh luckily their thick fur is masking the screams. Oh, I'm gonna run for the trees. I think I'm gonna make it. <sighs> Listeners, it's okay, I'm safe. I'm up the tree. They're watching me with such adorable eyes, just pleading with me to come down and play with them. They just want some love. This is Amelia Hawke reporting from up a tree for the Gone That Rares Digest. I've run away from adorable, fluffy, affectionate rhinoceroses, so you don't have to. Um, can someone send some help, please? I am so glad you made it back safely from that one. I mean, they, they, they just want love. They just want love. They're they so fluffy. Tummy tickles and fluff and yeah. I mean, they're they're adorable. They're cuddly and fluffy and they've got so fluffy. Yeah, huge it's, horns on their noses. It's, it's, and, if you yeah. if you took Mia's bear and stuck a horn on its head, I'm, imagine that's exactly what you'd get. Yeah, yeah. except heavier. <laughs> I mean, you've seen those. You've seen those videos of like puppies swarming people and you know, jumping all over them. Just imagine that, but with many of them being, you know, yeah. hundred kilos, quarter just, ton, that kind of thing. Yeah, just imagine that with rhinos. Yes. <laughs> rhinos. rhinos, exactly. Uh, and I, all the words I tripped up on as well, endangered. <laughs> endangered yeah, yes. I, couldn't, I couldn't get that word out. I just couldn't get that word out. Seamless. I was thinking endangered. Seamless. Endangered. Oh. Endangered. endangered. Yes. Yes. Obviously, you know, the ones found around the, the equator there are the proper old school, you know, um, prehistory kind of paleontologist special stompy large, you know, four bull elephant sized monsters. Yeah. Those won't do. Yeah. I mean, th those are just no. uh, way too dangerous. And yeah. So I can see why they tried to create a, a softer version. Mm. Like a yeah. And, and ethically thickly sourced fur as well yeah exactly i mean you know the, the rhino horns i mean the whole thing about rhinos and rhino horns and why they're endangered and people poaching them it's just crap it's, isn't it? it's I mean, a yeah. lot of posh yeah yeah it's a lot of pish posh and 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 then there's the fur thing and that's still pish posh as well but i mean these ones they just have to wait patiently for decades until they're done with it yeah they'll, well they'll, exactly. yeah they'll, they'll look after it until you know until and to, the that I know doesn't need it anymore. Exactly, and to prevent all the poaching and everything else, you have to supply documentary evidence that it mm -hmm. led a full and happy life. This and quote came from think, yeah, this quote it's... came from Frank. Frank lived until he was thirty-seven and had four babies. <laughs> and, yeah, and, you know. and, he, and grandkids and great grandkids yeah. and everything else. And and by the way, Frank's done with the fur now, so you can have yeah. it for an Frank's enormous. Favorite food. Food was, yeah. Frank's favorite food was Frank's favorite food was tundra oh, grass. Know. And he, he liked long walks on the tundra and cuddles. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. He that was Frank. Yeah, that, yes. that was Frank. That may, was, he, may he be remembered yeah. well. May you wear him always. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, doesn't it make you feel a, a bit more special about what you're wearing now? I mean, if, you, if you're wearing something that you've got the history you, of. Yeah, if your coat has a name, that's, that makes it special. Yeah, I mean, and each... the thing is, it's ethically sourced. You know, it... Yeah, yeah. Nobody it's, it's such a it, mean, it means you can still have nice things like fur coats and stuff. And, but, but each you know, item is eight, eight and a half thousand credits. I thought you were going to say eight well, and a half thousand tog. Is there only that too? I mean, it's warm, significantly warm, and it's the softest stuff you've ever stroked in your life. But I mean, it's eight and a half thousand credits. I mean, how much is a Sidewinder? Well, it's like an organic to... apple in comparison to a normal one. You've got to pay more for the extra. <clears throat> yeah. That went, you know, went through to get it. And yeah. as somebody's got to watch them and survive the enthusiasm and adoration that they give you. And exactly, yeah, they've got no natural mm. predators. So like they see somebody, they go, "Wow, people!" and stomp flat. You know, they don't it's realize. Like a big puppy. Exactly, it's a bit like bear is not a dog is a bear. Yes, um, doesn't he realize is, that he's, he's still smaller than him. he's only seventy five kilos. Yeah, but he doesn't realize he's as big as he is. Yeah. And um, he, he, want, he wants cuddles all the time as well. 
Exactly, and if it was made <laughs> of rhinoceros and that affectionate, it would be dangerous. If he steps on your feet and your feet, it feels like he's made of rhinoceros. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course, the softness of the fur does explain why it's so popular as a use for a merkin. Yes, oh, yes, <laughs> and people of other nationalities. <laughs> <laughs> Making, making, making. Right. I'm So um, th that's about it for the show this week. Thank you very yes. much for joining us. We are going to go and get the uh, the needle and thread out now and try and stitch it all back together again, which I'm going to accept 100% of the blame for. I missed um, the headline earlier as well. I'm just going to tell you now. Apologies. It was my own one. Me. It was my own one, but you know. Yeah, well, many many seems like uh, yes. The Nightmare Make Before Christmas. Yeah. And what, what was the girl in that who was all stitched together? Oh, Sally. Corpse Bride. That's the one. Sally. Or was that Cor the Sally Corpse Bride? Or I thought Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas had um, one, two. Juan, one, one, two. two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Testing. Yes, testing. testing. One, two. One, two. Yeah, it's Sally somebody in it, didn't she? She was Jack Skellington's girlfriend. Sally Stitches. Oh, I don't Does know. Does anybody in chat know, it. quickly before we end, what on earth that person was called? Hang on a sec, uh, Dad, Dad is bad Somebody's at gaming. Somebody's Googling it. Yeah, it says, what's the email address again? Flossie? Flossie? I took part. Oh, the, on, yeah. the, Flossie, what's the email address? I took part at huttonorbital.com. Yay! Dad is bad at gaming. Please do message us on that if it's you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And by the way, the you said during the sports report that there were many, many runs by one person. Yes, there were. Uh, what Mark is this sports report of which you refer? Yes, mm. sorry. Yes, mm. it's not do not speak. Of, do not speak to us of the I'm sports I'm living report. in the past. Speak to us instead of the Hutton Hilbert <laughs> results. I, I still pine for you know buck naked. The fields, you know. the fields. Yeah. The breaker said it was Sally Stitches. Sally it stitches, was yeah. Sally stitches. Okay, so yeah. um, and after after the uh, after hearing my uh, Hutton Helper results, I'm not surprised you're still paying for Buck. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So, but, that, but, the, that's a, that's, but that's something between the two of them, surely. Yes. So, so uh, back to your not the sports report, not Buck naked bit. Yep, 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 yep. There were a number of Hutton runs by one person. Yes. There were 24 Hutton runs by Impala Mark. Right, so Impala Mark... He said he would do 22, but found the time to squeeze in a couple of extras. Yep. So Impala Mark says... He likes those um, runs. I've tackled the first truckly task on my list. The task was to complete 22 Hutton runs in one week, which I have mm -hmm. just completed in five days. We As I gave myself that. seven days with which to do it, I will see how many more I can squeeze in the, over the next 24, 48 hours, uh, which was two. Uh, unfortunately, I have many tasks to complete back on Earth over the next few days, but I give it my best. Thus far, I've been flying in my Python, fully loaded with cargo on every run, because this seemed more truckerly to me, which it was. Now, however, I may mm. switch to a stripped-down eagle and have a bit of a go at the record, although the record of one minute twenty, it's one hour, 22 minutes, 20 seconds is insanely mm -hmm. fast, and I'm not holding my breath. Next week, yes. I'll have some news on the second truckerly task, It'll be something that other commanders can join in on if they want, but fair warning, it will be an endurance event. Sounds like fun. To find out details, do watch the Hutton Facebook page and mm -hmm. hunt for messages by Mark, because clearly there's stuff going on. Yes. Which is truckily. He's a one-man event generating community thing. Which is, which is awesome, and we look forward to finding out what the next truckily task is. We do. We do. If you we look do. at some of those, if you look at some of those times he's put in, though, that's bloody quick. If he's done it on a Python, oh, he's, he's fast. His fastest time yeah. was like twenty-two seconds off the record. He was tenth mm, place. Yeah. He was quick. Yeah, just, you know. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. And mm. would, I would imagine mm, with no <clears throat> wingman to help. I mean, there's there's no message of a team yeah. here. This is no, solo no. effort. Mm -hmm. I think the the winning times may have been with wingmen and beacons and that kind of. Yeah. 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 Hmm. But then you can see um, Socrates ectoplasm. Is, Socrates. Not, he's some Socrates. 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 Yeah. Socrates. Yeah. Socrates ectoplasm is about seven seconds off the record. Hmm. It's not far yep. off at all. It's pretty quick. Yep. 
And that's and given his, that the old bit means it? that times vary, that's that's not bad. Yeah, and so creates um, create exoplasm was doing this for a while before and getting very, very close. But that last one isn't his fastest time. His last uh, his fastest time is four seconds faster than now. It's only three seconds off the record. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, his fastest time ever. Yes. Yeah, that was when he was doing it before, yeah. Yeah, the third fastest time. Mm. Ever, yes. <laughs> we had a message there from Sal Gorf that the Greek chap, Socrates, yes. is using a wingman as well. I know because she is me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so Socrates is using wing wing team efforts. Wing person. Mm -hmm. A wing person. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can name drop the wing person if you'd like for credit. I'm, What's a very I'm nice sitting there waiting. Yeah. Yeah, nice, nice loud that. keyboard. Who's, who's punishing? It was, it was punishing it was me putting a, a "You are awesome" to Socrates. <clears throat> Not as awesome as your keyboard. Mm. No, nothing's as awesome as mine. That's a very, very that is a hell of a keyboard. That yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, oh, oh, yes. Mm. Ah. Um, anyway, so I've been told uh, at the end of the show it. I'm yes. supposed to do things mm. differently. Yeah, you In better do way. things differently. And I've not and changed any of the end of the show's end. setup, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You so have a there's, there, there's, oh, yeah. there's, I, I do have a randomizer. There's a thing, then there's a thing, and at the end of the thing, there's another thing. Which means you all have to oh, listen yeah. until the very end to work out which yes. end of the thing thing is at the end of the thing. Yeah. Uh, and that's the entire point of it. Did it early last week. Hmm. No, I always yeah. my setup does the Cecil ends the show and then it plays the tune. Wrong. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but then there's another well, like that's, one that's afterwards. That's the old way. Yeah. yeah, we haven't done that for twelve weeks. You'll be calling this a sports report next. <laughs> so what you're saying is, I need you guys to cover for me while I edit the end of the show thing. Oh, I, I don't have a cover. You've seen you like, Bacon what? this week. I'll do V for cover. you. <laughs> do I'll do V for you. Have you seen the price of animal meat this week? Um, <laughs> what kind of animal meat? No, rhinoceros. Not, not specific, is That's it? That's illegal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't get me started about those food cartridges. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, like, you'll have me back in 3D, 3D printed hot dogs in a minute. I do like me a nice bit of animal meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made him choke, yes! Yay! Yay! <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> well, I've, I've, I've reprogrammed the button, and it's going to play... I just can play the thing, then the music, because that's only fair. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, right. wait. okay. Let, let, me move. Wait. let me move it. Let me Try, move it. Trying to make things easy for it's yourself, the, aren't it's, you? Oh. It's the reward for listening to the song. A good yeah. song it is. Hang, hang on a second. So there's that one, then there's that one. Yes. Don't forget the little one at the end that's always the same. Hmm. Yeah, well, I've got uh, that one standby. I can do that. Right, okay, so I've got this one, then that one, then other stuff going on. We'll, we'll see. It might work. It might not. Something will happen. Right, goodbye, everybody. Same time, same place, yeah. next week uh, with more stuff. Thank you very much. And I'm going to push buttons. Fewer scenes. It might catch fire. No, no. Have you got you the expanding foam? You're, you're, you're missing something. You're missing something. You're what? missing something. You're missing, you're missing a bit. Missing. You'd have to ask somebody to want to the say something. Can't I can't program that off. button. You guys don't... It's not a button! It's not a button! It's not a button! It's a human! And exactly, that button doesn't make you jump. <laughs> so, do, do, so, please, do the thing. For the mug! For the mug! For the mug! For the mug! For that mug. there mug. <laughs> Any more mugs? Mug! Mug! Mug. <laughs> Muggity mug mug. 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 So much mug. Mug mug. mug. Journey too long, no cargo too small. Profit margins never really mattered at all. We're gonna take the cargo where it's needed today. Super cruising all across the Milky Way. We're taking anything, anytime, anywhere. Loading all the teen out to the brim with the rest for the more, for the more, for the more, for the more. Yeah, you know just where we're coming from. 
Flossie always seems to crash into the sun Skibble lies to pile it on the Xbox One Helping out the free, you know, leads us well Truck across the galaxy, now everybody yell For the more, for the more, for the more, for the more Yeah, you know just where we're coming from For the more, for the more, for the more, for the more Everybody's singing the Hutton Trucker's song For the more, for the more, for the more You know just where we're coming from For the more, for the more, for the more, for the more Everybody's singing the Hutton Trucker's song Give me a large path that I can land on And I'll give you cargo and sing you my song No point twenty-two light years to go Cruising to what? No journey too long No cargo too small The profit margins never really mattered at all Gonna take the cargo where it's needed today. Super cruising all across the Milky Way. We're taking anything, anytime, anywhere. So shout it out loud, like you don't even care. For the more, for the more, for the more, for the more. Yeah, you know just where we're coming from. For the more, for the more, for the more. Everybody sing the and chuck a song For the more, for the more, for the more Yeah, you know just where we're coming from For the more, for the more, for the more Everybody sing the and chuck a song Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the show. Everyone's buggered off now, so why don't you bugger off too?